I've had format problems, problems with people trying to agree with my opinions. I've had even problems with trying to be a serious critic. I've tried to be right, I've tried to be a helper in the community of YouTube. Please, just tell them I need help. The rabbi is busy. He didn't look busy. He's thinking. Don't you want somebody to love? Don't you need somebody to love? Wouldn't you love somebody to love? You better find somebody to love. Hello once again. I am finally reviewing the new Coen Brothers film which has finally landed in my cinema after about a week of it being on release and now finally getting to the picture house which I've been a loving supporter of for, ooh, maybe... How old am I now? I'm 15. I've been going there since I was 8, so around 7 odd years I've been going there now. And um, yes, this is the new Coen Brothers film and I speak highly of the Coen Brothers on these reviews. I uh, love the Coen Brothers, they are made some of the greatest American movies ever made, you know, they can go down as, in history as one of the greatest filmmakers ever made. They make great comedies, they also make thrilling, ripping films like uh, No Country for Old Men, Miller's Crossing, Baron Fink, Blood Simple, films like that. They also make comedies, which uh, I'll also go into through this review about different things, similarities with them all. Uh, so you've got The Big Lebowski, Raising Arizona, Intolerable Cruelty, Lady Killers, Burn After Reading, Raising Arizona, Big Lebowski, films like that. And um, with this film, I've yes, I've said to you, you must see this film. I hadn't actually seen it. I knew it was going to be good in some sense. Even if it was only like a six good, it would still be like film of the year, essentially. I could not be disappointed with this film. I, I could not be disappointed. I had to like it in some sense, and I loved it. <laughs> I really, really liked this film a lot. Now, it's a very dark comedy. The Coen Brothers films are all very dark, they're all very mysterious, and they all have something to do with someone's life, or something, or some part of someone's life going completely wrong. Take um, all the comedies, uh, Big Lebowski, Money Gone Wrong, and them getting trapped in sort of a very, sorry, very predict predictable, very sort of con artist kind of game. You've got Intolerable Cruelty, Marriage Gone Wrong, and Your Life Going Wrong. You've got Burn After Reading, which is CIA shit gone wrong. You've got The Lady Killers, which is Money and Bodies Gone Wrong. You have Ridge in Arizona, which is Babies Gone Wrong and Crime Gone Wrong. And you've got many things, and this one is about a complete and utter destruction of someone's life, essentially. And then um, it stars, uh, if I can get this right, I'm going to read it from this, because um, it's very hard to pronounce his name. It's Michael Stuhlbarg, I hope. And he plays Larry, Lar Larry Gopnik, and then um, he's, uh, you know, he's the the everyday kind of man, he's got a loving, f well, maybe not a loving family, he's got uh, a job as a teacher, I uh, can't remember what he teaches, I think it's math, ma physics, it's physics he teaches, and then um, all things start to go wrong, he's bribed into giving someone uh, a passing grade, which I would love, um, his marriage is going down the drain, his life is going down the drain, his health's going down the drain, his life is essentially falling apart with his family, his kids, his work, everything's sort of falling away and the thing that makes this, well, pretty much the perfect Coen Brothers film is that everything that happens to Larry is funny to us. You know, it's all very darkly humorous but it's not like, um, you know, you've got to sit back and constantly think that this is something to do with symbolism or you have to 
get into the film to find out a dark side that is funny and humorous and a bit twisted. It's it's not like that. It's not finding sick and twisted humour in horrors or something like um, Inside or Martyrs, which is a really sick sense of humour at times. And um, but this one, everything that happens to him is funny. Everything that you think you should not be laughing at this man's life who is falling down the drain. His family is going to, uh, to going away. He's getting divorced, but you can't help but laugh and. I guess it's kind of saying that um, laughter is sort of the best medicine, and that's um, and I kind of really liked about it. It's a very funny film. It's it's a very clever script, and I think this is um, going up there with In the Loop and uh, Synecdoche, New York, the Charlie Kaufman movie, is the best screenplay you know put onto the screen perfectly I've seen all year. And if it doesn't get even a hint of a nomination, I will be gobsmacked. It is really quite perfect and um, not to say that the film doesn't have a few nick, nick, nick picky problems you know the, the start of the film seems a bit irrelevant to the rest of the film it starts off in the old ages of sort of Jewish mythology you know all the things that you've heard about with old rabbis and whatnot because this is a very Jewish film it's um, a very dark darkly Jewish sort of it's uh, you don't have to be a course a Jew to enjoy the film you know I've already explained it's sort of for everyone who can sort of delve into the Cohen's sense of humor and that's what I like about it I have gotten used to films like The Big Lebowski and Raisin Arizona I love those films they are great but um, yeah and also the ending now the ending even though I'm going to say it's not maybe perfect because the thing about the ending is it just ends like a lot of Coen Brothers films, it just ends. Burn After Reading, No Country for Old Men, brilliant films, but they just end. No Country for Old Men is probably the rare exception of um, it ending and it being perfect for the ending. But um, Serious Man, the problem is that you've gotten so invested in these characters, you want to know more about them, you want to have a more good time with them, and you want to see what will happen to them, because at the end, he's just coming back for his x-rays. And then, then there's a tornado just about to hit, and then, boom, it ends. It just ends. But the more you think about the ending, and the more you say, oh, that was annoying, the more you think, man, that was a perfect ending, because the film is trying to say that not ev nothing is uh, predictable, nothing can go down a straight line, nothing can be foreseen, the future is unforeseen, you know, destruction is the main weapon that is used in this film, it is doing with, um, you know, his life starts to turn around near the end, but then, boom, disaster. Something else happens to him, and then it ends. It's trying to just say it's unpredictable. It cannot be foreseen. The future is unspoken, sort of. Now, for a serious man, even with those nitpicky problems, I still highly, highly highly recommend this film. It's one of the best films I've seen all year, definitely one of the best comedies I've seen all year, and it has uh, star-studying performances from some uh, relatively unseen names for a very, very long time. I mean, I haven't seen some of these actors for years now, since uh, they appeared on television, which was, oh, man, since the guy died. See if you can work out what I'm talking about. Comments below. Um, I give a serious man a good, strong 9 out of 10. It's not exactly perfect, to say the least. For some part, especially the beginning, I didn't even know it was kind of goofy and funny, and but it just didn't suit the vibe of the rest of the film. And yeah, I did enjoy this film a lot. It's very funny, it's very darkly funny. If you like a Coen Brothers comedy, you've been craving for a new Coen Brothers experience, go see this, because it really is the shit, sort of. I really recommend it. Go see it. Uh, you won't be disappointed unless you don't like the Coens, of course. Tom Chatham.